Now, we're going back to Obamacare. Sorry, I have to do it. It sure looks like the president has been caught in another misleading statement. Don't forget his very ugly new poll numbers. It's all coming back with you. Uh, we've got the implications of the Obama crash and burn. I'm Larry Kudlow. Please stay with us. Welcome back to the Cutler Report. Once again, our top story on the Obamacare front looks like another lie. He and his top aides were, in fact, warned that the healthcare.gov website would have serious problems, and yet he said repeatedly, and again just days ago, that he didn't know. Look at these two pieces of tape, and please, you be the judge. The president was briefed regularly on aspects of implementing the ACA, including uh, the recommendations from this review. I was not informed directly that the website would not be working as the way it was supposed to. You just can't have it both ways. You just can't have it both ways, as we discussed with Governor Walker. Anyway, the question is, how bad and big is this Obama mess getting? Let's look again at the latest Washington uh, ABC News poll. 63% of Americans now disapprove of President Obama's handling of Obamacare. But maybe more important, 57% oppose the entire plan. And his approval rating has plunged to 42%. And frankly, I think it's his repeated falsehoods. I think these falsehoods are infuriating Americans and sinking his credibility. So let's talk about some of these things. We're also going to look at potential federal bailout right away. My goodness. Here's Democratic policy analyst Mark Levine, and uh, we welcome back Jim Capretta, former OMB associate director for health programs. Jim, I, I know you're not a psychologist or psychiatrist or anything like that, but I just have to believe that these, I call them falsehoods out of respect for the office of the presidency. There's another shorter word that we could use. The constant unveiling of these falsehoods is just killing him, and he's going to need help when changes are coming. What's your take on this? Have you ever seen anything like it? No, I have not. I, I, I worked uh, at the OMB and, and under President George W. Bush, and as others have written, we had a huge apparatus in place to make sure the president never said anything that could be remotely close to not being true. So, you know, I, it's hard to imagine that the, the staff lets the president and, and this administration have let him say some things that are really questionable at this point. Really important to realize that they said they didn't know about these problems coming down with the website. I wasn't on the inside of government. Many people I know weren't on the inside of government, and we knew there were problems. Mm. I think they, they purposely denied that there would be problems because they never wanted to move that October 1 launch date. They wanted to launch the, the program no matter what was going on, no matter how bad it would be, because they thought it would be no turning back. See, I and think now we're seeing a, the results of that. That's a very key point, Mark Levine. I want to go to you. What harm would it have done <clears throat> to acknowledge what the McKinsey experts were saying and realize that the testing hadn't been done for the website and a lot of the connectors hadn't been done for the website? What harm to push back the start date? And even now, Mark, you have a Democratic revolt going on in the House and especially the Senate. They want to push back some of the uh, enrollment dates. Um, I don't see what's wrong with that. Why does Obama and his people keep resisting what is obviously going to happen? Well, first of all, Larry, I think people should be clear about exactly what the McKinsey report said. And there's a front page article in the Washington Post that describes it. The McKinsey report, guess what? Didn't do any technical analysis. They didn't look at the website. They didn't look at code. They made a lot of recommendations. Some the Obama administration accepted, some they didn't. They made predictions. Some were right, some were wrong. For example, they predicted there'd be long waiting times when people called. That turned out not to be true. They predicted the data hubs would be overwhelmed. That turned out not to be true. Now, they did make some good recommendations, and some of those were, for example, that President Obama should have put one person in charge right. of the entire rollout. And that also, was a good recommendation and, he should have taken. And they also but say... They, it's not like they said the whole, that the whole website no, was going to fail. No, they didn't say they, that at they, all. But they basically said the timing was all wrong. And, and yes, they, I'm going to say they did fail. Look, they said, this is in late March, okay? And they said management indecision and a lack of transparency and alignment on critical issues were threatening progress despite the uh, tight effort. They said the contractors were not uh, coordinating and as you noted, they said there was no overall quarterback. Look, those, those are, are big, fair criticisms. Those are fair criticisms. My but that point, doesn't but, mean the but president you're not answering my point. Committed a my falsehood. point is why couldn't Obama just acknowledge that and buy himself some time? And, and here's the key point. Right now, You've got smart guys like Jim Capretta and Yuval Levin. You've got a lot of people saying, here's what we should do, here's what we should do. Why is Obama so stubborn 
all right? Not even pushing back some of the deadlines that might help the, uh, for example, the cancellations recovery on the insurance plans. Uh, it might help people from paying the taxes. Why, why won't he heed the spokespeople in his own party? Well, first of all, I think he has acknowledged the problems. He said that no one was more mad at the bad rollout of, of the website than he was. And frankly, I, I'm sure that's true. But in terms of deadlines, we forget that there already are long deadlines out there. People have until March 31st, 2014, to sign up for the Affordable Care Act. In fact, they have till December 15th if they want it to take place in January. So these deadlines are there. People do have time. I guarantee you, if the website still has problems in March, he'd consider extending it at that time. Everybody. But I signed, everybody. I signed signed on October 22nd. Uh, you know, I had no problem at all. Everybody, everyone, look, Gene Shaheen, you got a dozen Democrats in the Senate to disagree with you, okay? You can give the talking points, Mark Levine, but the reality is you got a whole bunch of people who want a common sense reform. Jim Capretta, let me change the subject. Sure. Uh, Senator Rubio, pretty good piece in the Wall Street Journal today. Um, the thing might need a bailout. And there is an argument, Jim, and you can help us through this. The premiums, first of all, the volume of signups of enrollment is going to be a lot smaller than I think. The premiums are not going to come in, but the insurance claims, uh, maybe from the sick and the elderly, uh, are going to come in. There's going to be a deficit, and the government's going to have to bail them out. John Boehner today said no way. Of course, Senator Rubio said that in the Wall Street Journal. What's your take? Is this thing going to go under before it even hardly starts? Well, they, they put out a letter last week when they brought the insurers into the White House. They put out a letter through the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services hinting that they were going to juice up the bailout provision that was already enacted in the law to help the insurers if they suffered from adverse selection. So what's going on here? The president said, hey, go ahead and keep your people on their old plans in 2014. That means the people going into the exchanges will be less healthy and likely to get a lot more claims. The result of that will be a lot higher uh, payouts and premiums, and the insurers will lose a lot of money on the Obamacare exchanges. The result what? will be that the government will end up having to uh, cover those costs with a, uh, a risk corridor provision that they wrote into the law. All right, the risk corridor is what really interests me. Um, do they have to go to Congress to get those extra funds, Jim? No, that's already been built into the health care law. But they uh, are hinting that the regulations that are implementing it will be juiced up to give even more money to the insurers. So look for that in the coming days. I think all hell will break loose if that process goes through. I really do. And in fact, ah. I think it will be bipartisan hell. Nobody wants to spend any more on this stuff. I don't know. The way this thing's going, it may be... Uh, it may be dead before it even starts. Mark There's Levine. some good news, though, Larry. I mean, read the front page of the L.A. Times today. It turns out more people signed up in California in the I first agree. two weeks of November, than, twice as many as in the entire month of October. California they're going to meet their 2014 targets. So Unf in unfortunately, states they're, where they're the, trying to help the president succeed, the people are doing very well. No, now, it's I, true. I Republican agree. governors I are trying to destroy California, it. But I think, I think you've still got a problem with more uninsured than insured. We'll see how this cancellation thing goes. That's going to be absolutely key if they make their target of seven million. I mean, people can disagree. I can't forecast that. What I can forecast is the Congress will cause a big stink if Obama's people come to them for more money on this uh, Obamacare. That I can assure you, Mark Levine. Jim Capretta, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Now, be still, my supply-side heart. Will we really see, in just a few days, an actual corporate tax reform plan come out of Democratic Senator Max Baucus? He's the head of the Finance Committee. Is it going to be any good? We're going to get a preview from our good friend Jim Pethokoukas coming right up on the Cutler Report.